Let's talk about the Boeing company. The Boeing company basically operates in a duopoly. It's them and Airbus. The stock is down close to 50% in the last five years, and it's down close to 30% year to date. All of that is, to be honest, not an overreaction by the market because if you follow the news, there are plenty of negative headlines when it comes to Boeing with regards to pleading guilty, with regards to safety issues, concerns, things that shouldn't have happened, right? It's not like we're talking about a supermarket here or a PC maker. No, we're talking here about a company that makes planes commercially, but also for defense. Now, commercially, millions and millions of people worldwide enter those planes. Me, in the last day, I flown from Europe to Las Vegas. So greetings from America, greetings from fabulous Las Vegas. I was in an Airbus and in a Boeing plane. I mean, to be reading headlines where things are falling off a plane and stuff like that a week or two or a couple of weeks before you're taking a plane is usually not the most comforting part. But let's be honest, despite all of that, again, it's a duopoly. I don't see them failing. And maybe right now, yes, maybe right now it might be an interesting investing opportunity. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we'd really appreciate that. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description. And in the pinned comment, we get the top 10 best stocks to buy now. Or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So, the Boeing company has a market cap of $113 billion. Ford PE, 374 times. Of course, it's because, well, this year, it's a year where they're taking a big, big hit. But as you can see from the analyst estimates, fiscal year 2025, sales growth 20% and EPS going from, well, negative a loss, $1.47 to just over $5. Now, it's true that the estimates have come down quite substantially for a while now. Used to be closer to $10. Now we're closer to $5. Same thing with fiscal year 2026. Sales growth another 12.2%. EPS growth close to 70% year over year to $8.58. So now you're paying a bit closer to 22 times fiscal year 2026 PE. But here as well, you can see that the estimates have come down quite drastically in the last couple of months. But you could say that we might reach peak pessimism and bottom of the valuation. Now, if you're asking why is the stock down in the last five years, close to 50%, well, it's basically this pandemic hit, but even before the pandemic, the company was already taking hits because of the 787, less orders, more problems. Then, of course, the pandemic hit took an even bigger hit because, well, nobody was flying. And now you can see they are slowly but surely recovering from old side revenue, free cash flow side, gross profit, Net income in the last 12 months still negative, but as you've seen, expect that to become better in the next coming quarters and years. From valuation standpoint, it's true that we are now more expensive on close to all metrics that we're watching here. Price to sales is a bit of the same 1.4, so definitely not that expensive. But the rest since right now for fiscal 2024, we're taking a hit from a profitability standpoint. But next year, that should become much better, I would say focus a bit less on these metrics right now and focus a bit more on if the company does execute in the coming quarters. If we look at what the analysts are thinking, so the average analyst price target sits 18.32% higher than the price we're at today. Now, more recently, it was announced that Boeing will acquire Spirit Aerosystems. By the way, Spirit Aerosystems was part of Boeing a long, long time ago. Many believe that it was a big, big mistake to split the companies or spin it off. So, what will this do? Well, it demonstrates commitment to the aviation safety, improves quality for Boeing commercial airplanes. By the way, Spirit Aerosystems, they are the ones that manufacture, that make the body of the airplane. So, it leverages Boeing enterprise engineering and manufacturing capabilities, maintains continuity for key U.S. defense and national security programs, supports supply chain stability and critical manufacturing workforce, provides long-term value for commercial and defense customers, employees, and shareholders. So the merger is an all-stock transaction at an equity value of approximately $4.7 billion or $37.25 per share, which I believe is a bit higher than the price they're at today. The dollar transaction value is approximately $8.3 billion, including Spirit's last reported net debt. A couple of comments here. 
We believe this deal is in the best interest of the flying public, our airline customers, the employees of Spirit and Boeing, our shareholders and the country more broadly. By reintegrating Spirit, we can fully align our commercial production systems, including our safety and quality management systems, and our workforce to the same priorities, incentives and outcomes centered on safety and quality. As part of the transaction, Boeing will work with Spirit to ensure the continuity of operations supporting Spirit's customers and programs it acquires, including working with the US Department of Defense and Spirit Defense customers regarding defense and security missions. I do believe that Airbus is also a customer of Spirit. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think they're maybe going to get some compensation, but we'll see what happens. We are proud of the role Boeing plays in supporting our men and women in uniform and are committed to ensuring continuity for Spirit's defense program, said the CEO of Boeing. And so if we go back to their last quarter, a couple of things they mentioned here, they're undertaking comprehensive actions in their commercial business to strengthen quality and safety. Financial results reflect lower 737 deliveries and 737-9 grounding customers' considerations. Revenue of $16.6 billion, gap net loss per share of $0.56, cents, and core non-GAAP loss per share of $1.13. Operating cash flow of negative well, $3.4 billion and free cash flow of again negative $3.9 billion. Total company backlog grew to $529 billion, including over 5,600 commercial airplanes. So again, despite all the headlines, people still go to Boeing to make orders because it's either them and or Airbus. So revenue was down 8%. And of course, from a profitability standpoint, it wasn't that great. In some areas, a bit better than last year. Loss from operations, net loss, loss per share. But operating cash flow, of course, way worse. They will tell us in a second why. Non-GAAP, a bit of the same story. Operating cash flow is down, well, it was $318 million last year, loss, outflows, and and now we're at 3.3 billion and the same with free cash flow. They say here our first quarter results reflect the immediate actions we've taken to slow down 737 production to drive improvements in quality. We will take the time necessary to strengthen our quality and safety management systems and this work will position us for a stronger and more stable future. Cash and cash investments in marketable securities total $7.5 billion compared to $16 billion at the beginning of the quarter reflecting debt repayment and free cash flow usage in the quarter. That was $47.9 billion down from $52.3 billion at the beginning of the quarter due to the pay down of maturing debt. The company has access to credit facilities of $10 billion which remain undrawn and the company's total backlog at the quarter end was $529 billion. For the quarter that just ended, so they will report the next earnings report at the end of July. The expected numbers are for revenue to come in at $17.7 billion, which is a decrease of 10% year over year, but an increase of 6.8% quarter over quarter. So some improvements there already. Adjusted EBITDA should increase 75% year over year and 75% quarter over quarter as well. But net income, EPS adjusted and EPS on a gap basis, still no improvements there. But as for cash from operations and free cash flow, we should be seeing some improvements on a quarter over quarter basis and becoming even better in Q3. And so right now, looking at the stock, of course, big decrease, 30% since the start of the year. We are above the 50 and the 20 day moving average. So maybe yes, we did bottom here at around $170 or so. RSI was pretty low. Now it has positive momentum. RSI is pretty neutral. I do believe we have entered, let's say, a stage now where maybe the stock wants to stabilize a little bit and see how the company executes in the coming quarters. The 200 day moving average does sit at $194.2. And again, in the long run, me personally, I think this company is not going anywhere, meaning they're not going to go under. They're still going to get plenty of contracts. Yes, we do need to see more seriousness, better safety and quality surveillance inside the company. Hopefully, they've learned their lesson. Now, it's technically just a matter of time will tell. But I do think that at these prices, not just stock price, but from a valuation standpoint, risk reward, it does make a little bit more sense. 
But of course, that's just my opinion. Leave yours down in the comment section below. Do you hold shares of Boeing or maybe you hold shares of Airbus? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.